So I just thought I would summarize uh, the acid and base titration curves uh, with some example titration curves. Okay, so uh, just for weak acids, right, initial pH depends on acid strength. And let me just say it depends on Ka or pKa. Okay. So stronger acids will have lower pHs at the start. You know, strong acids will have the lowest. Uh, midpoint pH is also depends on pKa, right? It is actually midpoint pH. It should be exactly the pKa value for most titrations. The equivalent point pH, uh, weaker acids are higher. That's also true for the midpoint pH. So if the pKa is high, the midpoint pH will be high, and the equivalence point pH will be high. The equivalence point volume is always the same. And I shouldn't say always the same, always based on millimoles. Or moles. It doesn't matter if it's stronger or weaker. It's just based on the amount of material that's in there. Let's see. I think that's it. I have some other notes, actually. I'm going to take a peek. Oh, yeah. And the last thing is this whole thing about um, the final pH of all these curves, right? Um, Oh, that's why I didn't know, because my animation didn't come up. Uh, mid, a uh, final pH depends on the concentration of OH minus, which comes from the excess base. Okay, so if you subtract off the acid millimoles from the base millimoles when you pass the equivalence point, that base that's left is what determines the pH of the solution. We can look at the same kind of uh, sort of graph for uh, weak acids, right? And basically the initial pH, uh, it's highest for the weakest acids. Sorry, it's the highest for the... Well, that was weird. It's the highest for... Um, the strongest bases and then uh, midpoint pH is still equal to pKa so that is again if this is at 25 then at 12 and a half these are the pKa's these are actually the, the pKa's for the acids so you can actually look at those graphs a little closer if you want and see that that's what that that that's true the equivalence point pH right lower pKa means lower uh, equivalence point pH. It's and again, if it's a strong base being titrated by a strong acid, it'll be seven. But in all other instances, you know, it's the the pH is going to be um, uh, lower for uh, the lower the pKa of the bases. Okay. And then um, the equivalence points volume depends on millimoles. And then finally, final pH is dependent on excess strong acid. Um, one other thing I wanted to say, because, you know, I'm talking about pKa's and this is a base. Uh, one of the things that I don't know if I remember to say it in my lectures, uh, but if you take the pKa plus pKb of an acid, let's say, or a base, 
that's always equal to 14. And so that's actually a handy little thing to use because when you're thinking about a uh, acids, it's natural you're thinking about you know the change in pH and its pKa. But for bases, a lot of the properties depend on the pKa. So, um, you know, it, but you but you have pKbs, it makes it a little bit easier to translate those ideas. And this is just some, I just typed another uh, summary of the things that were similar for both acids and bases. Initial pH depends on strength. Midpoint pH is equal to pKa. Final pH is determined by titrant strength. And the equivalence point pH is approximately halfway between, right, the midpoint and um, the final pH. This is what I had talked about uh, before, the way to approximate what the pH is. And then I gave this graph if you want to like quiz yourself, uh, and uh, if you want the answers, you can come to the office hours and ask me.